Right. This is a, a story about Hasidi Chabad in the time of uh, World War II. And uh, as you know, that the the it was it was terrible for the Jews, especially in World War II. And it was better for the Jews in Russia, of course, than it was almost any other place. But it was terrible in Russia also because the communism was, you know, rampant, and they were very against any other uh, against religion in general. They were against, but especially against uh, Judaism, and especially against Chabad. And the Chabad movement was called the Shnirsinsky movement uh, after the Rebbe was the Shnirs. So a lot of the Chabad people they ran away <coughs> to Bukhara, Bukhara, Tashkent, and the, these other places, places far away from the center of Russia. And there, there was also a presence of the Communist Party, but it wasn't so severe, and also it wasn't so op op opposing to. Uh, to religion, to Judaism. <clears throat> the religion could be practiced over there. So, <clears throat> uh, but nevertheless, they were far away. Now the Rebbe, the, 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 <clears throat> the Rebbe had left um, Russia. The Rebbe, the, 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 <clears throat> the Rebbe, the Rayats, the, the Rebbe, sixth Rebbe, I'm sorry, the sixth Rebbe of Chabad, he was uh, imprisoned in Russia, sentenced to death, and miraculously, he got out and he was evicted from Russia. He was evicted from Russia, which was, uh, you know, of course, that saved his life. He was evicted from Russia in 1928, 1928. And he stayed outside of Russia. So merely when he was in, when the Second World War was uh, in, so they were, the Rebbe was already in America. He was outside. <clears throat> so there were, Hasidim made a for bringer. <clears throat> They made a for bringer, a Hasidic get together. And the Hasidic get together was very serious, you know, because the Rebbe wasn't there with him. And it was with a little tone of, uh, of sadness, even bitterness. And uh, how do you say, <clears throat> uh, almost depression, because they were so far away from the Rebbe, and the Rebbe was their source of light and life. To stand against communism, you know, the, the natural thing to do if you want to live an easy life, lead an easy life, to just to, you know, be a communist, just be everybody else. And here they had to go against the tide, and it was very difficult without the Rebbe. So they made a forbringer. And the forbringer became very serious, and they were singing. And so one of the Hasidim, I think it was Burki Echim, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> anyway, I think also Rabbi Nisim Nemanov was also there. <clears throat> anyway, so they said, Let's make a train to go to the Rebbe. We'll make a Rebbe train. I'm going to the Rebbe. Of course, they were all a little bit inebriated, which is not uncommon in Chabad for bringings when they make a get together. Who's with me? So two of them got together and they put chairs and they started pushing the chairs. Doo -doo, we're going to the Rebbe. And as a few more Hasidim gathered on. So let's say there were 50 people all together. And in this train to go out, there was 15 of them. So at first it was sort of humorous, but then they just kept doing it. Doo -doo, we're going to the Rebbe, we're going to get out of Russia, which was impossible. Nobody could get out of Russia. You couldn't get, that was why it was called the Iron Curtain. And Stalin was rolling over there with an iron hand. <clears throat> no way you could get out. <clears throat> Doo -doo, we're going to the Rebbe, we're going to the Rebbe. And so the other people that were sitting in, in the Fabringen, they, they, they started saying, okay, enough, enough. Sit down, be quiet. And they said, no, 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 we're going to the Rebbe. Doo -doo, we're going to the Rebbe, we're going. Nothing's going to stop us, we're going to the Rebbe. And the others were yelling at them. To Finally, the ones that were Fabringen, they just ignored them and they just continued with their Fabringen. And the 15, however many there were, and they just continued with their ridiculous, how do you say, childishness, and they went up. Well, it ended up that <clears throat> there opened up a, uh, a way that Hasidim could get out of Russia. They had to forge passports, and they had to go through a place called Lemberg, Levov, and it was very dangerous. And, was, <clears throat> and all of those Hasidim that were in the train, they all got out. They all got out. And the others, some of them got out, some of them didn't get out. But in other words, to show that if you think good, that it will be good. And if you think good, it opens up 
the vessel for surprises, for good surprises. On the other end, if you think bad, then even if there are surprises, you're not ready to accept them. And so a tremendous amount depends on our attitude and our way of looking at things. The world is a real world, there's no doubt about it. But we're here in the world in order to make a positive influence in the world. And if we begin, even when it seems that no way in nature or logic or in the world, we're going to make that change. But if we think we will, then we will. And it'll work. And I just read a story the other day about a couple that didn't have any children. And for 10, 15 years, they went to different doctors and made all sorts of things and that they didn't have any children. And, to, to, to improve, and it didn't help. They didn't have any children. So they decided that they're going to think positively. And they decided that they're going to do everything. They're going to get a, a room ready for the child. And, and they're going to have, they have to buy toys with it. The, is, the, is the child going to be a male or going to be a female? So they had to get, they got ready for this and for that. And they decided they're going to have triplets. <clears throat> they even announced that they're going to, they were thinking we're going to have triplets with this. And the whole family sort of got together the whole business. They're going to have triplets. And all the doctors said that they were nuts, you know, it didn't make any sense because according to science, there was no way, a possible way. And sure enough, after they began this insanity, uh, a year later, she gave birth to twins. She gave birth to twins. The couple is even, I know who the people are. So it shows that if you think positively, even though it might be ridiculous, and it seems that all the odds are against you, and that uh, nature is against you, etc., but thinking positively will bring positive results. And isn't that the history of the Jewish people? But the Jewish people held on to their Judaism despite all odds and despite all the excuses and the, and the uh, reasons that they had for not keeping Torah and the keeping the commandments. That's the story of Hanukkah. <clears throat> A handful of crazy fanatics changed the whole entire history of Judaism. To this very day, we still light the candles. And almost all the Jews light the candles, even with Jews that don't know why they're doing it. And the Hasidic, we just explained clearly, very clearly, that you can't understand why we're doing it. It's, we're doing it because the essence of God, and it's impossible to understand. But every Jew feels it. As we'll talk about more, God willing, <clears throat> tomorrow. Here, let's see, one second, we have a question. In the chat. Okay, one second, I'll turn this off here. Stop the recording.